What's going on YouTube? It's Brad. I am back. So about a year ago, I sold my 2013 Jeep Wrangler, the Moab Wrangler, and I ended up buying a 1996 Jeep Cherokee. So yeah, weird transition there, but I, uh, I've always wanted to have a Cherokee, and that was part of the reason why I, I gravitated towards this, this car. Um, the other thing that, that made me want to buy this is because those Cherokees are just notoriously easy, supposedly, to work on. Um, and there's abundance, an abundance of parts everywhere you go. Um, pretty much any auto parts store will have what you need for a Jeep Cherokee. Um, so I just kind of always had this love for the, the Cherokees, and I, I, I've always wanted to own one myself. So the opportunity came around, and I was like, why not? Let's do it. Now, I don't consider myself to be super mechanically inclined by any means, but I've really always also wanted to be. So this gave me perfect opportunity, again, to, to learn how to fix things a, a bit better. Um, and it became more of a challenge, honestly. So I bought this now with the intention of teaching myself how to fix things on a vehicle. So uh, I kind of want to take you guys along on this new, new challenge, this new journey of mine, and we'll see where we can get with it. In the past year, I've done quite a bit already, and um, I'll kind of run through that a little bit with you guys you'll kind of get an idea as to what I've done so far. And I'll also fill you in on kind of what I want to do moving forward. So I've had a lot of resources and you know, I've had a couple friends help me. I've also relied heavily on the Chilton manual, Chilton manual, um, which has um, pretty much everything I will ever need in regards to that, that Jeep. So to start it off, I, I don't even remember what the first thing I did. This is in no particular order, but I remember when I got it, I just knew right off the bat that this was really gonna, this is gonna take a lot of work. But um, I'll just kind of run through it here. So sway bar links, um, I did the ball joints, which I had help from my buddy Doug with, um, super helpful, thanks man. And then did the idle air control valve, the oil pressure sending unit, the power steering hoses, um, because I had a nasty leak coming from those. The headlight wiring, yeah, so when I got it, the headlights did not work right. I think I had to flip two switches in order for the headlights to come on, and then one of them did not even work. Fog lights didn't even work. So a lot of wiring issues going on there, and I had my buddy Andy help me out with that. We traced back where the wires were going, and it turns out the they had it repaired at one point, but they didn't repair it correctly. So we fixed that. Fog lights worked. Ended up replacing the fog lights, so I got some new hella bulbs on there and uh, headlights work great, so we're all safe. The suspension system, yeah, so I rebuilt the entire suspension, and this was probably the most challenging aspect of this entire Jeep. I mean, when I say there's rust, there is I, I, a lot, there's a lot of rust. Um, as we were taking things apart, nothing was actually coming loose. <laughs> Everything was just so seized on. Uh, we ended up cutting quite a bit of it off. Uh, like the leaf spring shackles, um, several several bolts, uh, just a, a majority of things just had to be cut off completely, um, which left us in a bit of a predicament because now um, with the amount of rust that was falling off, we ended up having a lot of holes that we had to get kind of fix. And there are still quite a few left, mind you. So nothing's completely done yet, but the suspension itself is complete. So we're, in that regard, replace the control arms, the shocks, the coils, uh, leaf springs. Also ended up replacing the bracket that holds one of the leaf springs in place because as we were taking up the old one, it was so rusted that it just kind of fell through and it left us with another hole and um, ended up having to weld on a new supporting mount for that leaf spring onto the frame. And it's a bit sketchy, but it's working and that's what matters. The tie rod system, uh, basically majority of the steering, in, in fact. So everything, I think, but the pitman arm has been replaced. So new tie rods, uh, the steering stabilizer, and the uh, the track bar. So I ended up going with an adjustable track bar. I ended up having to do that because of the, the three inch lift. That was pretty simple. Honestly, that was pretty straightforward. That was probably one of the easier projects. Um, new battery, because that old one just did not hold a charge very well. New spark plugs, new distributor cap, new wires for the spark plugs and cap. Um, had to fabricate two new brake lines, again, with the help of my buddy Andy. Thanks, man. Uh, two new speakers in the back of the Jeep. Uh, new wheel bearings and new wheel bearing seals 
on the rear side of the vehicle. And then also new U-joints on the drive shaft. Uh, so again, all of this so far has taught me quite a bit, you know, just seeing the mechanical components operating together and seeing how they work in real time as you're repairing them or replacing them is just, there's some inherent value to that. It's so cool to, you, you hear these terms, but you don't understand how they work. I didn't know what a U-joint was, but now that I know, it's so freaking neat to see the movement behind it and knowing that that's how your drive shaft interacts with your differential. It's really, really cool. Um, so I've had a lot of fun getting getting to work on these things, um, but it's also been a bit of a pain. Um, and I say that because, yes, I'm dealing with some unexpected items like rust. I did not realize that there was going to be this much rust on the car. Um, and also just odd noises that I'm trying to diagnose at the same time. Like right now, I've got this weird knocking noise that uh, I'll, I'll maybe make another video about at some point, but I have no idea where it's coming from. Again, I tried to diagnose it, thought it was coming from the differential, took a look at the pinion gear, took a look at the ring gears, the spider gears, everything is lined up correctly, everything works, there's no signs of any excessive wear, anything of that nature. Um, thought it might have been the wheel bearings, obviously replace those, still making the noise. Thought it might have been the U-joints, that's why I replaced the U-joints wasn't that but you know what we're doing preventative maintenance at this point so things are getting fixed i'm learning how to do it and it's been a lot of fun so i kind of just want to invite you guys along with me as i um turn this into who knows honestly i mean i not honestly don't even really have a goal for this i'm not too sure what it's going to be when it's done but it's uh it's got a three inch lift now it's definitely going to become in uh uh, an overland style vehicle at some point is, is kind of my only goal really and uh, I do have a few projects in mind as well that you guys might be able to offer some help on. Number one, I want to do an onboard air system and I want to do an onboard water system too. I think that'd be super, super highly valuable um, in regards to camping and things like that or just going overlanding in general um, and I kind of just want to make this fun for camping too. So turning this into more of a storage system in the back so I can haul my gear around, things like that. It just seems super practical and a lot of fun. I think I can design some really neat things for the back there. Also thought about maybe fabricating a roof rack that could hold some kayaks or something like that. We'll see. But these are all things that I wasn't able to do with the Wrangler. I just did not really feel comfortable doing that. Um, but this is something that I honestly could care less about. If I, if I heard something, oh well, you know? Um, so this is gonna be fun, I'm excited. Uh, and if you guys have any questions or wanna see something, something done to the Jeep, please let me know. Um, I would be more than happy to work with you guys on something. It'd be kind of neat. Make this a collaborative effort. So thanks for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.